This conference will now be recorded. Okay. I'd like to welcome everybody to the town board meeting of February 3rd, 2022. And uh, at this time, can we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence, please. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. All right, so um, do we have we have uh, we got our first discussion very quickly. We'll fi finish up uh, this discussion on the uh, town consultants. Um, we've done uh, have not done a request for proposals for the various consultants that we used on a day to day basis as needed uh, in quite some time. And it's recommendation of the state comptroller that's done periodically to ensure that the board utilizes its tax, tax dollars responsibly. Uh, um, sample RFPs were provided by attorney Joe McKay and uh, Clerk Poffin has revised them to be specific, specific for our needs. Um, I know we all had an opportunity to review and discuss it. Um, does anybody have any comments at this time, uh, changes or additions that we'd like to uh, have made? I know that we had a, a brief discussion on this just a moment ago. Um, so Desiree, do you want to just add a little bit to that, what we're going to do, and then we could just move forward? Sure. Um, so the draft I put together for you, uh, your attorney provided you some insight on. We're going to amend um, a couple of sections with regards to how they would be uh, charging their fees. We want them to give us a broad outline of what their fees are going to be based on certain projects and types, um, whether it be hourly or a fixed fee. Um, and we're going to make sure we re remove all the mention of the word bid and replace it with proposal and remove bidder and replace it with applicant. Um, I'm going to suggest we have later on the agenda to authorize me to advertise for it. I'm going to suggest we wait another meeting. This way you can review the final format and be comfortable with what you're requesting. And then if that's the case, then we can authorize it at the um, February 17th meeting. That's I my agree. suggestion. Yeah, we, uh, based on our, our discussions with, uh, every, with the town board members, um, there's a lot of information that we still need to gather and digest. And uh, that's uh, I agree with that. Um, Joe, do you have anything, too, that you'd like to add to that? Joe McKay? No, I, I think I um, <clears throat> advise the board and attorney client session. And um, I will work with Desiree to make the types of uh, amendments that the board discussed, and they can be recirculated. And I actually think it's a good idea <clears throat> to wait to take action until there's a final document and until all the board members can, can weigh in. So I would agree with Desiree's suggestion to put it over till the next meeting, unless the board feels that there's some urgency to act. No, and based on our discussion that we had, I think we're good with this, uh, with, you know, just um, continuing the process and uh, hopefully by next month we'll be in a better place um, to, to uh, make a decision. Um, okay. There is another item that I'd like to move along to. Um, I had had a, a number of discussions with Councilwoman uh, Kate Luciani regarding the possibility of this summer having a um, sort of a, a, a um, fundraiser, so to speak, at the res. And uh, I think, um, Kate, maybe you could elaborate because I, I specifically asked um, Parks Director Joe Gianzaro to be here so he can join in with us at this preliminary time, you know, to discuss it further um, before we meet with the Parks Committee and everybody else. So go ahead. Okay, Kate. thank you. Hey guys. Um, so I reached out to Tom because I had uh, somebody reach out to me and they wanted to see if they could do a carnival at the Walmart parking lot to raise money for the wrestlers in Monroe Woodbury School District. So I had called, you know, the village to find out if we could do it there. They thought that it was Harriman's um, property. I called the mayor in Harriman. He said that it's not their property, it's Woodbury's property. 
So then I spoke to the Harriman Fire Department and they said to me the way that they handle it is they go through the management company that owns that property and then through Walmart and their lawyers and it's like a long ordeal to do and deal with but you know that's how they get it worked out. So I was figuring you know I spoke to the uh, building inspector in Woodbury and we actually have a meeting with him on Monday. So I was going to figure out that, but I was trying to think of different ideas. Um, I, I was thinking maybe Bond Street. I spoke to Rob Wyant and he and I were coming up with ideas and he thought maybe allowing them to do it at the res. So I spoke with the supervisor. I asked him what he thought about it. He thought, you know, it was a good idea. We'll bring it to Joe, see what he thinks about it and see if it's something that we can do, you know, at the res to be able to you know, raise money for the wrestlers and you know, bring people down there. Um, someone was saying maybe do like a really cool car show. Uh, the man who wants to do this is a detective in Spring Valley. And he said that he has done several car shows where they have actually like Lamborghinis come down. Um, so we were thinking about something like that, like having like a barbecue, like a, a cookout, you know, while we have this carnival that um, could raise money maybe for kids that can't afford to go to Camp Res. So this way you're doing two things at once to help people in the community. So I just wanted to discuss it with you guys and see what you all thought about it. Well, uh, Kate, I think it's really is a good idea. I like what you, what you brought and what you presented and you did a lot of homework on that before you came to speak to us. So thank you for that. And um, I did discuss a little bit of this with Joe so, so that he would have an idea of what we were gonna bring to him tonight and ask him to, um, you know, add to it. So maybe Joe from Publix can say something about it. Um, I, again, I think it's a great idea. Um, whatever you guys would like to do at the park is I'm all for it and I'll jump in a hundred percent. And I believe the park committee would do it. And I believe the community would do it. Uh, anything for a good cause to bring the people of Woodbury together. I think it's a home run. So, uh, we still have a little bit more work to do. If that's what we're going to do, we still got some talking to do and, and logistics but again i'm i'm on board so do we need to do this before the res opens so that we don't have to get people just from woodbury people from monroe can come too well mm -hmm. even if the res is open you don't really have to have just woodbury people i mean we had we had the res open with the uh uh first responder day and you know we had people from Monroe and stuff come up, so it wasn't. That's not a big issue, I don't think. Um, but if you want to do it before the res or in September or after, that's up to you guys. But we can, you know, that's something we could all talk about. Yeah. Okay. That way, I mean, this is a, go ahead, sorry. Kate. Uh, one other thing I wanted to say was um, the, the man that I spoke to. He has done this before. He's done other carnivals. He's used the same people. So they have the insurance. He knows what he's doing. So it's not like the first time. So I think that that's also a good thing. We wouldn't be jumping into this with somebody who has zero idea as to what they're doing and, you know, trying to find like people to run it. So I think that's also really good. Sorry, Tom. Well, I like the idea because this time it would be for the wrestling team, for example, and maybe for a couple of the uh, um, residents in Woodbury whose children may, you know, would not be able to attend. Maybe we could assist with that, like we are doing in some other funds that we have designated for that purpose. And, and it, I know, you know, that worked out great uh, for some of the families in our community. And then, and then, you know, if it's something that 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 works out, uh, you know, these things that we do can filter into, you know, out into other areas also. So it's it's a great thing to start discussing and, and working on, and uh, I think we should move forward with it from tonight. So that's why I wanted to bring it up um, in our work session. So thanks, Tim. You have anything? No, no, I'm good. Uh, I think that's a great idea. Um, anything I can do to help, you know, anything uh, like Joe said, anything to get people involved and for a good cause, right? Absolutely. Okay, very good. Are we are we close to seven? We are after seven thirty, correct? So we could actually at this time we can actually uh, tra transfer right into the meeting. Um, so uh, the town board meeting, uh, February 3rd, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go live now to the public, uh, public comment. 
Does uh, anybody out in the public at this time have uh, any comments on any agenda items tonight? Uh, I see a few names and faces. I don't see faces. I see names. So if anybody like to s speak. All right. I don't hear anything right now at this time. So I'll move on to administrative business. Um, can I have a, a motion and a second to accept the receipt of the minutes of the regular meeting held January 20th, 2022? Make a motion. Second. Again. Second by Tyler. Uh, any discussion? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion passed. Um, then we'll go to the approval of the abstract. Desiree, could you please um, read the abstract for this evening? Certainly, abstract three contains vouchers 220115 through 220194 and totals $185,170.45. All right, can I have a motion a second to approve the abstract as read? I'll make, I'll make a motion. motion. Oh, all right, Tim will second. Um, any, uh, all right, so we're all in favor? Yes, aye. 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 All right. All right. Motion passed. Um, modifications to the 2021 budget. Uh, Desiree, please read the modifications for the 21 budget. There's only one, and it's for the clerk's office by increasing a 1410.200 equipment by $813 and decreasing a transportation and travel by $813. Um, I just uh, just want to add that um, this modification is in connection to the thirty thousand plus grant uh, Desiree obtained for uh, records management. Uh, it's for the computer that will be used for research of past town records on microfilm. Just so uh, so you have a little bit of a background on that. So can I have a motion and a second to approve the modification as read? A motion. Second. Any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passed. Um, modifications for the 2022 budget. Uh, Desiree, can you please read the modifications for 2022? Yes, there are two. The first is for the Justice Court by increasing a 1620.468 Justice Court renovations by $150,348 and increasing a 599 appropriate fund balance by $150,348. And the second is in the town board line item by increasing a 1220.445 meetings by $1,000 and increasing a 599 appropriate fund balance by $1,000. All right, so just a little bit of an update. Um, the first modification is to recognize expenses to the courthouse uh, in 2022 that were planned to be completed by 2021. Uh, but have been delayed due to COVID and uh, difficulty getting materials, which we are all aware of. Um, the second modification is fund is uh, to fund various expenses related to meetings held throughout the year for the department heads jointly with the village um, and the Orange County associations of towns, cities, and villages. Um, as everyone's aware, we've started meeting jointly, the towns and the villages, and um, so we want to appropriate some expenses for that for that purpose. Um, so can I have a motion and a second? I'll make a motion. motion. Oh. All right. Uh, Tim second. makes the motion. Tyler second. Uh, any other, any discussion? Okay. So um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion passed. Um, old business. Um, the, at this time, I don't think we're going to authorize um, the ver to the proposal for the various town counts uh, consultants. Uh, after our discussion, we're going to con continue further on uh, with this, so we'll we'll wait on that. Um, so I'll move on to the update with the library board um, request for capital improvement fund. Uh, let me state that since the last meeting, uh, our attorney Joe McKay has been conducting research into this issue so the town board can try to accomplish for the library board what they have requested. Uh, research has not been completed. And as of yet, um, I just wanted to, as of now, I just want to assure the library board that the town board, the present town board, um, um, have 
has this issue as a, they hold it in high regard and it has not been forgotten and hopefully we will have this resolved soon. Um, I'd like to ask um, our attorney, Joe McKay, if you'd like to just add a little something to this at this time. Uh, sure, uh, Mr. Supervisor, just a uh, little more facts. Um, since the last meeting, I've actually had two telephone conferences with the Library Board Council, and we have ex exchanged some preliminary research that we e each other has uh, performed. And in our last discussion, um, I did ask that uh, counsel for the Library Board provide the Town Board with some type of a narrative, maybe a two-page letter or so, uh, indicating, you know, essentially why uh, the library board is creating the funds for what purpose and what the intended use of the funds were uh, so that our board could be more educated and uh, we could uh, exercise uh, a little due diligence in um, approving, showing that's approving the, um, excuse me, in approving as Tom said, what what the library is looking to do, whether that's going to be one cap one capital reserve fund or um, multiple reserve funds for various purposes. All right, Joe. Thank you very much. Um, just so I wanted the public, we all want the public to know that this is something that has been, you know, we are um, faced with this, um, and we are uh, going to work very hard and come into a, an agreement with the library board and everybody on behalf of all the residents without a doubt so that's what we're working towards and we we won't stop till we get there um the next item is to um re-advertise for letters of interest for the board of assessment review um the deadline to submit letters for interest as uh is january 28th 2022 um and uh, was January, I'm sorry, was January 28th, and no letters were received. One uh, vacancy uh, exists on the board, and it needs to be filled so that a full board can be present for Grievance Day, which would be on uh, in May. I want to say the, on the fourth Tuesday of May. Um, can I have a motion to second to authorize the town clerk to re-advertise for letters of interest for residents interested in volunteering to serve on the Board of Assessment Review? I'll make the motion. Second. Tim seconds. Um, Can we have some discussion? Yes. Any discussion? Go ahead, Tyler. Yeah, I think we should um, put in a stipend. Um, I'm thinking around $300 a person and authorize also uh, something for a meal because they can't leave the location that they're at between afternoon and evening session. So Tyler, what you're what you're um, asking is because um, we had a discussion on this, you and I. You're asking for three hundred dollars total or per day? Three hundred per person. For for one day or for two each day or how do you want to? For for whatever it takes to get the job done. So okay. per year. Per year. Per year. And if it turns out to be more next year, we'll have to may have to raise it, but. Let's start at that because we also have to get this done. They have Desiree, you said there's training in April, right? So we have to get this done sooner rather than later. Um, well, yes, listen, so we'll have the letters due back um, by February 25th, and then you can interview them the week before and then hopefully make an appointment at March 3rd. Okay. Um, so you're Desiree. Tyler's asking for 300. Can, can we make a motion to uh, at this time? You should finish your motion first to authorize me to advertising. We'll say, you know, letters due back by March, by February 25th, and then all, you know, do your own favor. And then you can make a motion to set a stipend of $300 per person that serves on the order assessment review. I don't think you need to include the dinner thing as long as it's in the budget. When you do your budget time, that's when that can be recognized. Um, but you should definitely uh, separate the two motions. One right, for so, one for the stipend. So the first one will be the motion to advertise, uh, re-advertise for letters of interest for residents interested in volunteering to serve on the Board of Assessment Review. So um, can I have a motion? We we did the oh, motion we did already. We just All got right. a vote. 
Yeah. All right. All Aye. in favor? All in, fa all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And then Motion. I'd like to encourage the board to really go out there and try to find people to apply because this is the second time. This will be the third time now that we're advertising and you only got one letter the first time and no letters the second time. I don't know why I'm using my hands, but you should definitely try to find somebody. I know I've been speaking to a couple of realtors because I, I was told realtors are good for this particular position, um, but really you got to find people because we definitely need a third person. Right, right now we have, presently we have, we're, we're, we have two. Um, we had just done it, remember, uh, uh, the, this present board, we were all part of that interview process and we hired the, the second person. Um, so now uh, what I wanna do is I wanna make a motion now uh, to set a stipend to at $300 annually at this time for, um, for the appointment of the um, Board of Assessment Review board. Um, can I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Uh, I'll, I'll second. second. Oh, Kate, <laughs> Kate seconds. Kate Luciani seconds. Um, any other discussion? All right. So all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion passed. Good. Um, moving on to new business. Um, the ex I have an acceptance of resignation for uh, a, a Ms. Califena. Uh, it's been determined that former tax collect collector Carol Herb's deputy never submitted a letter resigning from the position. Therefore, uh, I need a motion in a second to accept the resignation of Josephine Califena from the position of deputy tax collector effective December 31st, 2020. So, Tyler, you were asleep at the wheel on this one. Any, uh, any dis can I get a motion? <laughs> make a motion. Tim I'll makes second. a motion. Kate seconds. Any, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Okay. Um, we're moving on to public comment. Does anyone from the public have any comments they would like to make at this time? I have uh, one comment, if that's okay. Okay, and we have um, Miss Rachel Bruce. Go ahead, Rachel. Awesome, thank you. I just wanted to congratulate and commend the town board as well as the village um, and Senator James Goofus and anybody else who I might be missing. I apologize in advance for um, the effort to uh, distribute uh, tests last week or a couple weeks ago. It was a great, um, it seemed to be a huge success and hopefully there won't be a need to do it again, but I just wanted to thank you all for doing that. Okay, well, thank you, Rachel. Um, uh, there was a number of people there, and uh, we had, we wound, they showed up. Senator uh, Scoof has showed up um, with his staff with approximately 500 kits, and uh, it was a cold day, um, but we were out there, and I would say close to 300 or plus kits were handed out, and uh, it really was a, it was really a nice turnout, and it was good to, to see that and. Uh, then I also like to add to what Rachel said, the police uh, department, we're very pleased with then went up and got some kits, um, some test kits and delivered them to both the village and the town um, offices for the, for the um, employees of the town also. So a uh, special thanks to, for that effort also. So uh, thank you for that. Anyone else? Hello, Mr. Supervisor, Legislator Tautel, how are you all tonight? How are you, Lori? I am great, thank you. I uh, I know you heard this when I talked about it at the Village of Woodbury board meeting, but we did pass the resolution today at our legislative session, and the town is slated to receive an additional $360,704.48 in sales tax. And uh, that should be probably within the next month you'll receive that money and you should have already received your uh, fourth quarter payment of $243,723.80. Uh, we actually did, Lori, and thank you very much for that. Um, we, we did receive that the town uh, supervisor's office did receive that notification and uh, it's, a, it's a huge amount of money and um, thank you again for that. You're welcome. Does anybody have any questions for me? Uh, Laurie, this is Tyler. Um, 
Tom and I tried to get on the um, sewer district meeting, but we couldn't get any sound. I was wondering if you could give us an update. Okay, so right now we're moving forward in the seeker process. They are looking for grants to fund the uh, capacity expansion at the sewer plant. And we also had a resolution that we passed uh, at that committee and then today in the legislative session for uh, a speedies review and speedies additional speedies to the Ramapo River. Okay. Is, I can is there, send you, I'll, I'll email you that whole resolution. Is there a limit on how much can be put in the Ramapo? Oh, yes. That's part of the problem. Because the Ramapo uh, further down river is a drinking water supply, there is a very strong limit, a very uh, sensitive limit on how much uh, we can put out into the Ramapo River as um, uh, total, I think it's called total dissolved solids yes. and the sodium. Um, so that is definitely a, a big issue and one of the reasons why the county in conjunction with yeah, I'll text the expanded... Yeah, call it's, it's, call it's expand Hello? Are you Joe? Is that Joe McKay? No, I think it was Chris Graziano's uh, line. Oh, okay. Not me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, that's one of the reasons that we are also researching, trying to uh, get away from exiting our sewer plant or uh, most of the sewer into the Ramapo and looking at possibilities of teaming with other municipalities to go into the Hudson River. So okay. that is something else that we are we've been looking into and our engineers have been looking into. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Lori. Um, good. Does is there anybody else out there that like to speak? I okay. Tom, All right. Well, uh, go ahead. Um, supervisor, um, Yes, go ahead, Maria. Maria. I'm sorry, I was having an issue getting my unmute the button. Um, is it possible if I can ask um, Lori to tell a question? Sure. Um, Lori, are you still there? I'm here. Um, I'll probably reach out to you tomorrow, but um, with Valley View and Goshen, do you, does the legislature body ever find out if there's issues going on up there? Because currently, there are 30 residents that I'm aware of that are displaced into another ward because there's no heat since um, it's been two days now and the system is not fixed yet. Um, how do I go about reaching out to you and making sure that the legislators are aware of the issues at Valley View? Okay, upon reviewing my email today, I did not see anything from Valley View and Commissioner Ledoux on a heating issue there. We normally do get updates from the commissioner, especially uh, we pushed on the COVID issue because we were getting uh, constituents calling us and saying, hey, do you know this many people are out with COVID or this many residents have COVID? And we finally have the issue straightened out where he is alerting us of that. I did not receive any communication about a heating issue there. I don't know if he uh, notified the chair of the health and mental health committee, which they report to and I'm on, but I will look into it definitely. I'll email him tonight and look into it, follow up again in the morning, Maria. Okay, perfect, because I'll probably reach out to you tomorrow as well because a personal issue occurred last night with, um, with a family member up there. So I'm really concerned that Valley View needs all of our assistance up there with uh, making sure that all residents have the proper heating and care that they deserve. Oh, absolutely. Yes, please. Give me a Thank call in the morning and I will make sure that everything is addressed and, and that we get the answers and get the situation fixed. Okay, perfect. Thank All right. And thank Night. you, board, for letting me speak to her tonight. You're welcome, Maria. Uh, anyone else? 
All right. Um, I think what we'll do now is we'll move along to board member and department co uh, department comment. Um, start with Tyler. Yes, I'd like to express my condolences to the Grinrod family. Uh, Mike Grinrod passed away last Friday. Um, he served the community for over 40 years in the Ambulance Corps. He was on the Parks Committee for, I believe, eight years. He was also a member of the Woodbury Community Association. He volunteered a lot of, a lot of his time to the community and uh, lived here all his life. And a lot of people knew him, and I just wanted to let everybody know. That's all I have. Uh, okay, thanks, Tyler. Um, Councilman Finnegan, go ahead, Tim. Um, no, I don't have anything tonight. Uh, trucking along, I think everything's going well. And uh, like I said last month, I'm very excited to see the village and the town board working together so well, and it's uh, it's definitely well received um, from everyone that's been telling me so. Hey, uh, Tim, I, while, since it's your comments, I'm going to put you on the spot. Can, what do you think about um, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, the weather? What, the um, road? So far from what I'm seeing, I mean, it's it changed a little since I left work, but um, they're saying starting around 11, I believe, and then progressing until, I believe, 4 or 5 p.m. tomorrow with a slush ice situation. Um, so I don't think it'll be super heavy, but it'll definitely be slick out, and everybody should, uh, you know, proceed would caution anywhere you have to go if you don't have to go anywhere i would definitely uh stick at home for the day and, you, and you're you'll be up early yeah i'm going in early tomorrow yep. <laughs> all right thanks thanks tim kate go ahead councilwoman luciani thank you supervisor um i want to start off by expressing my condolences to uh the nypd you know, as the daughter of a police officer and the sister of a police officer, I think it affects a lot of us, you know, in this community, communities all around when you hear of the loss of, you know, two heroes that, you know, as a kid want to do something and change the world and, you know, to, to hear what happened, but see the outpouring, you know, uh, people there for them and the streets lined, you know, with all the police officers, I think it's, you know, beautiful. So. I just want to express my condolences to you know everybody and our brothers and sisters in blue and then i just also want to say from that you know this is the month of love and uh i think it's important that we spread kindness um you know just doing little things here and there to change somebody's day even the smallest things that we can do can change someone's world and then i also want to thank our highway department again building and grounds and water department for keeping us safe and you know make sure that everybody's off the roads tomorrow and that's about it so have a good night everyone all right thank you kate um our attorney mr joe mckay i don't have any comments mr supervisor thank you <laughs> all right um from our buildings and grounds uh, uh joe jean zero um just a couple of updates. Uh, I know the newsletter came out, but uh, if you guys didn't see the newsletter, um, the Bills and Grounds did a great job at the court. Uh, the, the court clerk, we put a new a new uh, ceiling up, uh, insulation uh, painted, uh, gave them a little spruce up there. We uh, spruced up their bathroom over there. Um, and the next project we're doing, we're doing a new kitchen at the senior center. So if anybody wants to come by and look at it, uh, right now we stripped everything. We're painting, uh, probably continue tomorrow unless the, you know, unless it's really bad out, then we'll be salting and scraping the roads, uh, the high, uh, the parking lots and the, uh, the emergency services. So that's where we are with the uh, bills and grounds. And I want to thank the guys for doing a great job for the snowstorm. Um, that was a more snow than they said we were supposed to get. So, uh, you know, and the highway department, our town's got the best guys. That's for sure. Um, no offense, Tim. Um, the, um, <laughs> So uh, the parks, uh, we sent letters out. We're getting some letters back from the kids. Um, so we're getting there uh, pretty soon. Probably when the weather breaks, we'll get more letters in. So uh, and we're trying to do a lifeguard class at the um, at the middle school. Uh, we uh, Desiree's helped me. We sent some paperwork in. So we just got to get confirmation on the dates. 
So if we can get a lifeguard class going, because uh, we need about 50 lifeguards to open up both places this year. So uh, that's where we are with that. And um, I think, Tommy, I don't want to step on your toes, but um, I know I see uh, Ed De Jesus is on. I had some calls from the Boy Scouts tonight um, about, you know, opening up our community center and stuff. And I don't know if you're going to touch on that tonight or not. So uh, if you are, then it's all yours. No, go, go ahead. You start off, Joe. Um, you know, we have groups that use our community center, the Girl Scouts, the Boy Scouts, the Cub Scouts, uh, cheerleading, um, and other groups that want to use it just for parties and stuff. Uh, so we've been closed for, for now, um, and they understand, and we know there's COVID out there. But um, I've got a call uh, from a, one guy today. Uh, just want to know what our game plan is, and if you guys have any, you know, any updates of when you're going to start opening back up. Okay, I'll mention it. I'll I'll I'll, I'll expand on that, Joe. Thanks. Thank um, you. Maria Hunter, I know Maria Hunter's there with us tonight. Maria, do you have anything from the beautification committee? Uh, not tonight. Thank you. All right, and of course. Deputy Supervisor Desiree Potvin. <laughs> well, while wearing my town clerk hat, uh, I know volunteerism is a tough thing nowadays. Uh, everyone's starving for volunteers, and every organization or entity that has volunteers is important and should be recognized. Um, one that I deal with directly is election inspectors, and the county is desperate and starving for individuals to volunteer. You do get paid about two, three hundred dollars. It's not a whole lot to be working from 5 a.m. until 10 p.m., but it is a, a worthy thing to volunteer for. So you can be part of the election process and uh, help those to uh, know how to use the new voting equipment that started two or three years ago. Um, so if anybody's interested, uh, please reach out to the County Board of Elections or call my office and we can provide you with a uh, phone number to do that. Um, it's definitely something that as long as you're registered to vote and 18, which is what you need to be registered to vote, you can work as an election inspector. Uh, also, I want to remind everybody, especially with the roads coming tomorrow, that there is no parking allowed on any municipal roads in the community because that would prohibit the plows from doing their jobs or the sanders in this case, maybe, from doing their jobs. And um, the Highway department does call the police department. They do come knock on the door to get you to move your vehicle. If you're unresponsive or refuse to do it, it will get towed. Um, and that does cost quite a bit of money. So please be respectful of your neighbors and have your vehicles off the road so that the highway departments can do their job efficiently as well as safely. And uh, Tom, you're gonna talk about the garbage for tomorrow for those of us on the one side of 32, or do you want me to bring it up? Um, no, I, I have a couple other items. So if you want to, you can go right ahead. Okay. So everyone who's supposed to have garbage picked up tomorrow, which I believe is everybody on the east side of 32, which is Skyline East. east yeah. Uh, they are coming. They will be around at 1 a.m. So put your garbage cans out now if you have not done so already. Um, otherwise, you won't get picked up till next week and don't call tomorrow because they would have been by while you're sleeping. So if you live on the east side of 32, um, I don't know if any of you is on who does, but if you do, put your garbage cans out now as soon as you leave the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Desiree. Um, just to add to that, yes, I was with uh, I was in the office today with uh, with uh, Clara, and uh, when it came across that um, they're going to be here at one o'clock this morning, uh, I mean, you know, this evening, um, it's going to be a rough day tomorrow um i know joey and the and the buildings and grounds and also the highway department they're going to be out there um, um the decision was made uh collectively to uh, close the town offices tomorrow uh because of the road conditions so uh, i just want to let everybody to, to be aware of that and also uh to be safe um the few other comments i'd like to make um that we have myself and uh the mayor andrew uh, we have put out a monthly newsletter. It's going to be circulate. If it started circulating, I'm also going to have it at the uh, senior center and at the post offices. Um, there was a, a resident um, who had sent out a, um, a, a public um, on social media that, to, pot, to put it out. 
So um, I thought that was a great idea. And so we'll have that. We made some copies today, so we'll have it out for the public. Um, and we're hoping that that turns into something really, really great and positive um, for all the residents. Um, I want to touch a little bit on the uh, our public uh, buildings, the senior center, the rec building up at the reservoir that Joe mentioned, and the gatehouse over by the uh, golf course. Um, these we are open. The public uh, knows that these buildings are open. Um, the town services are there. But at this time, we are going to keep the, um, these these buildings closed for private um, um, private groups uh, due to the fact of the numbers that we we look at and and uh, the information we gather on a daily basis. Um, I'm on a daily um, conference call with not only the county but also with the Tyler who who gets information on a daily basis too. Um, we filter it through with uh, Tim and Kate, and and you know what? It, 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 nothing more would make us happier than we could have these things open at this time. But we're going to be very cautious, and um, we're going to have these uh, this open as soon as we possibly can. But we have to be safety minded first and foremost. Um, I just we just want everybody to know that there's a lot of groups that are asking that would love that we would love to um, use the buildings, but at this time we're going to be very very um, cautious. But it will, it will uh, hopefully this this will move along like uh, like everything else. Um, to the Grimrod family, I know they were here for a very long time. I've been here a long time, so um, my condolences to them. I know there's a relation to the Tyler to Tyler, so um, sorry to hear about that. Um, as far as the police department, the officers, I know Kate had said something. Um, I also um, come from a police family, also and. You know, some people um, have to, you know, it, it's it's a difficult job. I, I work for the Department of Correction. To me, it's no comparison to what the police department and the police officers deal with on a daily basis. They put their lives on the line. Um, you know, I have a daughter who's a police officer in Baltimore. And, you know, I have a sweatshirt upstairs that says, you know, some people never get an opportunity or a chance to meet their hero. You know, I was very lucky. I raised mine. So to all those police officers, I, my, my thoughts and prayers are with them and especially to those families. Um, those, I, I can really, you know, we can all feel for the families, the siblings and the mothers and the fathers. So to them, um, more thoughts and prayers, my thoughts and prayers are with them. Um, at, at this time, I really don't have anything else. Um, and I, um, I want to um, make a motion to close the, this portion of the meeting so that we can go into um, our police commissioners meeting. So uh, at this time, could I have a motion? Could I have a motion to close the meeting? Make a motion. Make a motion. And a second. Who's the second? Who said? I second. I'll second. I guess, I guess we're going on for all night. Yeah, I got Tyler making the motion and Tim seconding it because you both said it at the same time. So. Oh, all right. All in favor? Aye. All right. So motion passed. Um, all right. So now we're going to go quickly into the police commissioner meeting. I have uh, two things on the agenda, so I'll read them off so we can. Uh, um, really, this is this is just being done for the purpose of the submission of paperwork that needs to be filed with the state. Um, I have an acceptance of resignation for um, Officer Scott Danielson. Uh, can I have a motion and a second uh, to accept this resignation of Scott Danielson from the position of part-time police officer, effective February 4th, 2022? Make a motion. Make the motion. Tim makes the motion. Uh, Councilman Finnegan makes the motion and Councilwoman Luciani seconds. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passed. And then my second uh, is, uh, can I have a motion and a second to appoint Scott Danielson, uh, Officer Scott Danielson, to the position of part-time police officer with a start date of February 19th, 2022. I'd like to make that motion. I can second. second. Councilwoman Luciani seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, with that, with no further business to discuss, can I have a motion and a second to adjourn the police commissioner's meeting? 
unless Tyler wants to stay on for a little while longer. I'll make the motion. <laughs> I'll second. Second. Second by um, Councilman Finnegan. All in favor? Aye. All Aye. right. Good night, Aye. everyone. Thank Aye. you. Good night, everybody. Be safe. Good night, everyone. Yeah. Good night, everybody.